whoa, okay, get ready for a deep dive today because this one is uh, kind of blowing my mind. Yeah. We're diving into the answer to the hard problem of consciousness. And let me tell you, this is a question that's been keeping people up at night for centuries. Sounds like you're on a mission to figure it out. Yeah, your source jumps right into the deep end. It's so interesting how we all kind of get what consciousness feels like, right? Like being aware and thinking and experiencing things. But when you try to actually define it, yikes. It gets kind of tricky. For real. Yeah. It's like trying to grab onto a shadow or something. We know it's there. But when you try to pin down what it is, yes, that's the whole mind-body problem thing, huh? Mm -hmm. Like our brains, they're physical. So how do they create this whole inner world of thoughts and feelings and stuff? And that is exactly what this author thinks they've cracked. They actually suggest that maybe the way we usually define consciousness is, well, too broad, too big, too messy to really wrap our heads around. So how does, uh, <laughs> how does this author break it down then? Okay, so they say the most basic fundamental part of consciousness isn't some big complex thing. It's way simpler. They call it meaning from a perspective. Meaning from a perspective. Hmm. Okay, so it's not just about like taking in information, but about that information actually meaning something like from a certain point of view. Exactly. They use this example of the color red. Even something simple, like a few elements that you know represent redness, that could be a teeny tiny bit of consciousness because that redness means something from its own like limited experience. Okay, so it's like, even if it's not a thinking, feeling being, those red elements still have their own way of like, relating to the world, their own little experience of what it means to be read. Exactly. And get this, this is where things get kind of crazy. The author thinks this meaning from a perspective, this basic consciousness, it could be everywhere. And I mean everywhere, not just people, not just animals, but maybe everything. Hold up. So we're talking like conscious rocks. Yeah. Sentient coffee mugs. That is wild. It does sound a little out there, I know. But think of it like this. We already get the idea of levels, magnitudes for other things in the universe, right? Okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. Like a pebble and a mountain, they're both rock, just on totally different scale. Exactly. So maybe consciousness is more like uh, a spectrum. And that rock might have a teeny tiny bit of this perspective-based consciousness, but it's nowhere near as complex as what we experience as humans. Okay, so if something as simple as a rock mm -hmm. could have you know, some level of consciousness, mm -hmm. What makes us humans so different? What about this whole me feeling we have inside our inner voice, all that? That's where the author brings up this idea of working memory. Good catch, highlighting that in your notes, by the way. They think it's a big deal for what we usually think of when we talk about consciousness. Right, working memory. Remind me, what was that again? So it's like that mental space where we keep information active, right? Like if you're trying to remember a phone number while also like having a conversation, it's doing that juggling act in your head. Oh, right, right. Yeah, it's that constant flow of information, like processing and updating. And... Exactly. And the author thinks that's a big part of why we feel like a single self. Instead of experiencing each little bit of sensory information totally separately, our working memory kind of weaves it all together. Oh, interesting. So instead of just seeing red, our working memory lets us hold on to that, but also process shapes and sounds and emotions at the same time so it's like a way bigger more connected experience exactly and because humans we've evolved to have this really high level working memory we experience this like constant super intricate tapestry of information as our consciousness one big unified thing okay that's really interesting but can you imagine if we didn't have that like mm -hmm. what if we just felt every single input every thought every feeling as its own separate consciousness well a whole chorus of consciousness is all going at once. That is a mind-bending thought experiment for sure. No kidding. And speaking of mind-bending, the author talks about those split-brain patients. Oh yeah, the split-brain studies. Those are always fascinating. For anyone listening who doesn't know, these were studies on patients who'd had the connection between the two halves of their brain surgically separated. Right, right. And the author, they asked the super interesting question, what if each half of the brain could learn something completely independently? like? totally isolated from the other half. Would that be evidence of two distinct consciousnesses in one brain? Wow. So it's like asking, could each half of the brain have its own meaning from a perspective totally on its own? That would be huge. Right. And on that note, speaking of big questions, the author gets into this whole other debate about humans versus robots. Yeah, they kind of go there, huh? They do. They basically say there's no big difference between us and robots. They think humans are just really, really, really complex biological machines. 
robots basically, but made of meat. So no mystical soul, no magical spark that makes us conscious. Just really, really advanced robots. It's a lot to take in. Part of me wants to believe there's something more to us, you know. But when I actually think about it from their point of view, it kind of makes sense in a weird way. I know, right? That's what I think is so cool about this piece. It makes us question all these ideas we have about being conscious, about being human, stuff we take for granted. It really makes you think about AI differently, though, right? Uh -huh. If we're all just, like, machines, but biological ones. Totally. I mean, imagine if consciousness really, I guess all about like meaning and perspective like mm. the author says and ai well we already have ai that can process info make decisions even act like it has emotions where do you even draw the line then could ai get so smart so human that it could actually convince us that it's conscious too and would we believe it should we it's getting real you know like this isn't just sci-fi anymore if we actually start seeing those glimmers of perspective of meaning and things of you create man our whole responsibility toward them changes this is seriously heavy stuff. We started out asking, what is consciousness? And now we're talking about robot rights and my head spinning. No kidding. But that's what I love about these deep dives. Even if there aren't easy answers, this author, they just threw open the doors on how we think about all this. It's like hmm. consciousness itself got bigger somehow, you know? Totally. Sometimes I guess it's not about getting the right answer. It's more like asking the coolest questions, the ones that really make you wonder, <laughs> even if the answers are kind of freaky. For sure. Uh, got to keep that sense of wonder, that curiosity. Got to be willing to question everything and see what's out there. Well said. So on that note, I want to leave you with this. Your source got me thinking. If consciousness, even the simplest kind, is about seeing the world and deciding what it means, mm -hmm. what does that mean for how we treat everything around us? Not just each other, but like nature, technology, even that coffee mug. Okay, I'm doing it again, but seriously, <laughs> something to think about, right? Thanks for taking this wild ride with us. Keep those brains buzzing out there.